This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. In big red letters, it's Alex, it's me. In the ramble, that's in the big white letters. That's the name of the program. We're here until midnight tonight. Wow, we haven't really talked to you in a long time. No, that's right. That's, I was on vacation. Yeah, that's Steve Kravitz. He was on vacation. And uh, now I, uh, uh, you, you were have been gone for, oh, I don't know how many months. But in the meantime, I played old interviews with you on. Oh, you on, did. Yeah, when I, when I needed to fill in on a, on a Thursday night, and they're they're good. I mean, they're terrific. You know. Right. They're evergreens, as they would say in this business. You know. Right, right, yeah. right. I know exactly an evergreen story. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, a new backdrop for you, Alex. Well, it, you're it, in a different room. Is it well because I I decided on a different backdrop. Right. Uh, because I like this because it's like I'm in my living room. Yeah. Right, uh, right. But uh, it is a photograph of my living room. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I can change it. You know, I can at a moment's notice. I had before. I think when I was there, I had a, a video running in the back of the city with the lights blinking on and off. And well, you like had that. the city. I don't remember it blinking. Oh well, you probably didn't look that closely, but it was it was animated. Oh, I didn't care. Well, I didn't care that much. You didn't care, right? Right. But, uh, I have missed you. I got to tell you that I really have. You're one of my favorite people, and uh, I love talking with you because really? we we just have a conversation. It's right, the, right, 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 right. It's the same with Bubbles. When I talked to Bubbles, I had to apologize to Bubbles. I said, "Bubbles, I hope I'm not talking too much in these interviews." And he goes, "No, I love listening to you talk about stuff." Right. So you right, know, me too. I, yeah. So I I just didn't feel guilty about it. Right. Yeah. Has Pearl been on lately? I haven't even talked to Pearl. I should get a hold of Pearl. It was just, right. it was getting difficult to do it with him because he was always doing it on his phone, so he was holding it, you know, and it just looked terrible. Well, I get you. You know. How about Durst? Have you talked to Durst? I try. Okay, I was supposed to interview him a couple of weeks ago, and then he never called, okay, uh, even though we arranged it. Uh, right. It, it's very difficult. I, actually, I should do all this through Debbie. And Debbie will say, "Hey, remember today, blah blah blah. You have blah right, blah, blah right, blah. right, 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 right." Uh, because I mean, he's you know, he's he's not a hundred percent well. He's not even fifty percent well. Right, you know? right, right, uh, right, right. But I do like talking to him. It's funny with Durst. I'll tell you, Durst has always been doing his interviews with an iPad and lying in bed, and it's you know. And one day I called him, and he was sitting up they were getting him ready to go somewhere and he was sitting up with his hair cut and everything else and he looked terrific you know he didn't look like he was you know in a in a you know in a bed after having a stroke right um, right right and so i told him next time we do it let's do it with you stand, sitting up somewhere because right. it looks much better and you look much better i said now if you're going for the pathetic thing well, you know, then we'll keep you <laughs> in bed. Well, you know, they raised a lot of money. They raised about, God, quarter of a million dollars, I think. Was oh, that right? A lot of money on GoFundMe, and uh, I just, I guess maybe it wasn't good for him to look unpathetic. All right, you know, right, you, right, right, a telephone. Right. You don't bring, bring bring out the kids are almost completely walking again. You know, so, right. Whatever. So, but you should tell people what happened to you for the last couple of months because it wasn't like it wasn't the normal reason. Like, oh, he's terribly ill and he's having to overcome this illness and so on and so forth. First, the reason was is that you weren't available because you weren't home. Right. Right. Well, want, I was in. Uh, I had a couple of uh, oral surgeries. Well, no. Wait a minute. Do you want to talk about the other thing first? What, what other thing? They kept you off. When you were in a uh, oh a sleepaway camp, a sleepaway camp, getting better, getting better. Did that work good for you? Yeah, I did. It looks it worked a lot. You look fine. You look, you know. And they adjusted my medication. Was that, Not the, that I need medication? 
mind you. Yeah, right. Not that I need it. They adjusted your medication. Right, right. <laughs> but Not it, that I need I'll it. tell you, they find a lot of times in this day and age that the, the, that the doctors don't adjust medi- medication, and that's why people feel like crap, you know, right. or right, going right, right. going crazy or whatever, you know. And that simply an adjustment in the medication can do a world of wonder. Right, yeah. right, 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 but, right, right. But anyway, you went to sleepaway camp. You went in and told them, I think I need sleepaway camp. And so you were away right. sleep away. That was a month there. Okay. Right, 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 right. Or the 28 days. You know why it's 28 days? Why is that? Because insurance covers that. It doesn't cover 29 days. Oh, really? Yeah, so you were in for 28 days, right? Now, we should also say that I was at sleepaway camp, but I wasn't at a drug rehab. Oh, okay. I was in I was in a psych unit. Oh, I see. oh, you really went for the big uh, the big um, uh, Lebowski on right. that one, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I I, I can uh, I can appreciate that. I, bravo for uh, even doing better than uh, than uh, a uh, rehab facility. Right, you know? right, 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 right. But that helped. Well, I haven't had a, I haven't had a drink or a drug in uh, close to seventeen years. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you don't get mental problems that are affected by your former usage. Right, 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 right. right, right. It's kind of like, you know, they talk about COVID and people keep having problems from the COVID after the COVID is gone. Right, And they call they call call them long haulers. But I think, no, we have to recognize there's such a thing as a long hauler even with a drug problem. And that 17 years later, you can still have residual effects from your drug usage. Yeah. Right, right, sure. And mine was my teeth. And and yours was your teeth? Right. Well, what happened that was next, okay? So you get out of the, out of the uh, out of the uh, what is it uh, hospital, whatever. The loony bin. The, the loony bin. Okay, the loony bin. He was bonkers. Okay. Okay. It, it happens. It happens. These are the these are what, I don't know if people listening to us realize these are technical terms. Bonkers. Batshit right, crazy, right, right, right. batshit crazy. Right, right. Did you right. Re- did you re- did you reach the level of batshit crazy? Oh yeah. Oh okay. All right. Good. Then you were batshit crazy. That's a technical oh, I term. I don't do anything folks. second second place, Alex. I go first away all the way. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. the bells well, and whistles. Uh, you're an achiever. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> you're, right. I'm an overachiever. You're an overachiever. <laughs> Anyway, so you went and you did this, uh, and then you come home and your teeth are. What's that? Just what, a mess. A Just mess. a mess. What's, what was happening? It was really painful to eat. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I went to the dentist. Yeah. And they took x rays. Yeah. And I then went to the oral surgeon. Yeah. And they took out all my bottom teeth. How many were the, How many teeth? All together? Yeah. Top and bottom? Yeah, top and bottom? Well, no, they didn't take out all the ones on the top. The top is a partial, the bottom is a full denture. Wow. So do you take the denture out, or is it an implant? No, I take the dentures out. Yeah, no, what happens is these days, they t- sometimes they take that denture, what would be the denture, they make a thing, and then they implant it. Right. I, I, my insurance wouldn't cover implants. It would only cover dentures. Oh, okay. So, 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 you, so you got dentures. All right. Right. So you, you got the dentures, what, the, all the bottom teeth? Right. Wow. Right. Wow. Yeah, well, it looks great. It Thank looks, you and, so much. And, and actually, you're talking okay. You know, you still, your mouth is a little, you're kind of holding it in a certain way because you're not right. used to the dentures. But, right, right, right. But anyway, they had to pull all, all his teeth, I guess, and then some on the top as well. And those are that's, right, right. Those right. are partials, you know. And uh, do you soak them every night? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know you beat me to it. You know, I'm well, 82 thanks. years old, and I I have some teeth problems, but it's nothing like that. I have some crowns that are breaking up and things like that that I got to have fixed. Right. But, you know. But, but they're anyway. not going to yank out all your teeth. Yeah. So so once you got the new teeth, you must have felt a great deal better. I mean, you know. 
Well, I'm still getting used to them. Yeah. I mean, it's still not easy to eat. I mean, eating is still problematic. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, well, uh, I see all those ads on TV. You're supposed to, like, can you eat corn? You know, they always say, oh, I'm having trouble eating corn. Well, why not use Dentufix? You know, then right, you'll be able right, to eat right. corn. And I always figured the ultimate thing in dentures is that you can eat corn. So you have to use Polygrip, I think. What's your What's your cream of choice? Is it Polygrip? Yeah, sure. It, really? Is it good? I don't know what to compare it to. I mean, I'm doing <laughs> Yeah, I guess they could. I guess they could sell denture people just about anything, and they'd accept that it was better than what they, without it. Right. Yeah, right, you know, right, but right, but right, that it may right. not be doing it as well as it should. Yeah. You know. Right. It wears off. I mean, over the like, uh, it's easier to eat in the morning than it is at night. At night, I still have to eat soft food. Yeah. You know, I'm not out there, uh, like, having a steak or anything yet. Well, well also, your your mouth must still feel a little raw from all the teeth being pulled, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, it's still healing. Yeah. It's still healing. You know, I, I, mean, I, I think about this program of mine, and I'm going, you know, they really, today, what they want is young people listening to podcasts. And I'm thinking, there is nothing on my podcast that would possibly appeal to a young person. You know, uh, hey kids, today we're going to be talking to somebody who has dentures. Uh, no, right, 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 right. Right. Who came out of uh, came out of the batshit crazy bin and uh, then had to have his teeth removed. Right. You know something? That batshit bin must have worked because if anything would make me depressed, it would be them pulling all my teeth. Right. 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 No shit. It wasn't easy, Alex. It hasn't been an easy couple of months. Right. I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah. You know? But you're back, and, you know, you can now do your stand-up unless while you're doing your stand-up your dentures fall out, you know, so. Oh, God forbid. Yeah. God yeah. forbid. That would be the worst thing. Well, you're you're uh, you're in better shape to go do stand-up than, than Will Durst, for instance, who can't even stand up. Yeah. Right, God bless. But he could do sit down. He could do sit down. He could come on a stage and sit down or be in a wheelchair, and the audience wouldn't, you know, they, they'd be on his side. He'd get their... their right, they could care less. Yeah, and they probably it would be an advantage because they will put up with more from you. Like, if you start bombing, they're not exactly going to boo a guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> Are you now a prop comic if you're in a wheelchair? Oh, yeah, right. Well, he, you make Durst a prop comic. Well, I keep telling him you could be the first first comic in a wheelchair. I don't know any other. Do you know any other comics that come on stage in a wheelchair? No. Why not? No. Why not? You know. I don't know any other comics that need a wheelchair. Because if you're in a wheelchair, does it change whether you're funny or not? No. You know, it probably adds a little bit to the funny. You know. Well, Durst didn't need any help to be funny. I mean, Durst is just funny. Period. Yeah. Yeah. He's a funny dude. Yeah. But all I'm saying is is that I think that uh, I just I, I want to see him get out of the hospital. I just think being home would be do him a world of good. You know? Yeah, but he'd need round the clock care. He, I don't think he's that bad off that he needs round the clock. Okay? But uh, I'm not a doctor. But right. he but he's really he's he's in a uh, long-term care facility I don't know what they call it and it's not exactly a complete medical facility I don't think no uh, it's more of a rehab isn't it yeah it's not a hospital setting it, yeah it's a rehab but um, you know and they're kind of I think they're kind of giving up a little bit on him you know but oh, you think so well I don't think that I don't think he's going to be able to walk you know, that's just my opinion from everything he's said. It's been really slow. I mean, he's been in there. He's been in there two and a half years. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's been that long. It's been that long. And I, I think that's very dispiriting. I think that getting somebody home as fast as possible, and if nothing more, having nurses and doctors visit him, is would be very therapeutic. You know, it yeah, and Debbie would love that. And they put in a chairlift and all of that, you know, so that he can... Well, don't they have... Didn't, didn't Debbie put one of those in? Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, uh, expecting that he would be home soon, but he isn't yet, you know. So, I mean, I just think that, you know, like, you know that the minute you got home, you felt a little better. Sure. You know, because this is your stuff, you're in your place, you know. Right. And I think the most therapeutic thing is to be in your in your place. Oh, well, you're right. You know? You're right. So, but, uh, so how, how have you been otherwise? Oh, I'm living the dreams, Alex. Living the, <laughs> living, dream. living the fucking dream. Living the fucking dream. And what, what dream? What, what dream exactly is that? Is it a wet dream? Yeah, I think it's a nightmare, actually. <laughs> uh, you're living the dream. Well, you should come down to see us now. We almost we almost have this apartment rented to us. Oh, really? Yeah, almost, almost. Are you still in litigation? Uh, it's not that we're in litigation. Uh, we're in after, we made a deal in court, okay? We pay the guy who lived here 75,000. The landlord guarantees they will give us a, um, um, a, what do you call it, a lease, okay, in our name. Right. Okay, at rent stabilized price, or, and the, the or that we had in court was, whatever the judge says the rent should be, or that a, uh, something like the rental people uh, say it should be based upon market the value. Well, no, not market value. Based upon the record of the landlord and how well he stayed with what's called rent stabilization, and that means that back in two thousand three, the rent here was five hundred dollars and four cents or seven cents. I don't know why five hundred and seven cents, but. Let's, let's not argue about it. I'll give right. them the seven cents. So then what happened was is that for something like seven, eight years, they didn't register this apartment with the DH something, the DHC or something like, I can't remember what it's called exactly. And so there's a question as to whether the rent should be the same, say in 2011, as it was in 2003. And the answer is probably yes, because they didn't register it. And so there's no record of uh, who was in here and how many people, right. you know, whatever. So uh, anyway, the judge's determination was, because he didn't like the landlords and felt they were lying through their teeth, they said the rent, the proper rent for this apartment right now is three $500.07 a month. That's what you're paying a month? Well, that's what they're supposed to give it to us for. Not the 2225 that we said we would pay because that was the rent stabilized number. Right. But then the judge decided it wasn't and that the number should be 500. So because we agreed to that in court that whatever the judge said, that would be the rent. But then we went to the landlord and they said, oh, we're not signing it for $500, 2225 Then we had to go to the judge and have him make a court order saying, pay up, you know. Right, give even, though, even though, I mean, $2,200 is, is still dirt cheap compared yes. to what you have. But I wanted it 500 because that's what the judge said. I'm not gonna go against the judge. Right. So that has been going on for months now. I mean, literally months. And I think we finally got it so that the landlord will give us a lease for $500 a month, and he's gonna appeal it, and if he goes to an appeals court, and the appeals court says the price is higher, which we think the only suitable higher price is somewhere around $850, um, because then we take whatever the lowest rent was in this line of apartments in the building in 2013, and that was $850 or something like that. But if they want the difference, but they will pay the difference between whatever the court says retroactively, but give us the lease now for 500. Because I'm not giving them a whole bunch of money and then a court decides that the 500 is fine and then they got to pay us back because I don't trust the landlord to pay us back. Right, right, you know? right, right, right. So it just keeps going on and on and on. And come on, it's going on for the, this is nine years of my life we've been going through this. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Nine years. Nine fucking long, tedious years. And how long have you been in that apartment? 
say that. Uh, oh, uh, we've been in here. Well, I guess you add three to that. So we've been in here about 12 years. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just insane. Just insane. Uh, and uh, it just goes on and on and on and on. Just, you know, everybody, do what you said you were going to do. I right. said I was going to pay this guy $75,000. we are writing a check right now to send to him for $75,000. You know, we're li living up to our side of the bargain. Now everybody should live up to theirs. You know, the guy we paid the money to, he's granted to give up the, his rights to the apartment. And uh, uh, we're all living up to our stuff, but then you get to the landlord, and who knows what he's doing with this guy who got a settlement of I think two hundred and thirteen thousand dollars on top of our seventy five. But, oh, really? uh, but I'm sure he's not going to be able to collect it until the appeal. They will not pay it. You know, it's really just it just it goes on and on and on. It should have been over with in two years, and that's it. We finally wound up paying $110,000 in legal fees over the years. Is that right? Yeah, so. You know, I, we can't complain because you take the 75 and you take the 210, 110, and you add those together and you divide them up and we were paying like a little over $1,000 a month rent over that nine years, so. Which is still nothing. Which is still nothing, yeah. But you know, I mean, it just it just keeps it just keeps going on and on and on, and we're in our in our twilight years. We'd like to be able to enjoy them, right? You know, right, 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 right. Yeah. So yeah. all bets are off that we got to our twilight years. Huh? Oh yeah. Well, you haven't even really reached them yet. You're what? You're sixty-seven, something like that. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. Okay. I just turned sixty-six Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Did Medicare or somebody help pay for those teeth? Yes, Medicare. What kind of Medicare do you have? It was Medicare the, Advantage. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, and it took care of all the dental. Right. Really. Yeah. Son of a bitch, because we we pay three hundred dollars a month and get the other, because uh, it takes care of everything, but uh, we don't have dental in it. But we get dental through my wife's work, where she's leaving, but they're. They're paying her a quarter of her, her salary to just not come in and stay home for the next two years. And they're, oh, really? and they're also taking care of our um, uh, medical. So we're, 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 we're good to go for another two years. Then what we do, I don't know. But I, I just never got that advantage. See here folks, here for old people, we're talking Medicare Advantage now. Right. Yeah. The trouble with Medicare, only trouble with Medicare Advantage is you get the right plan, you'll be okay. But it, what happens is the um, your regular Medicare disappears. You don't have regular Medicare anymore. You have Medicare Advantage, and all the stuff is administered through them, and you have to go to uh, their network of doctors and so on and right, so forth. Right, 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 and, right. And I right. think if you want to quit Medicare Advantage and go to, say, the other Medicare plan you can't because you can't I don't think you can get Medicare back and what happens is these insurance companies get paid by Medicare to take care of your costs so that's why they go on TV and they advertise like crazy because they're gonna make money from the government for signing you up you know see I didn't know all that yeah I didn't know all that yeah but the fact is it took care of all your teeth and and that's pretty good you right. Know, you can't complain right. about that. You know. Right. And uh, so you have to go to the the uh, the network doctors, big big BFD. Big right. 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 Bill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, you look like you're feeling good. I mean, it's the old. Yeah. It's the old uh, uh, Kravitz I knew. Well, m the old Kravitz I knew minus the drugs. Minus the drugs. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I got to say this, and I, I mean this very sincerely. You were much funnier when you were high. Anyway. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, like, said that to me. I'm just, I'm, I'm an encouraging sort. Right, <laughs> you right. Know. Alex Slayton is... Said, Slayton said the same thing to me. Did he say that? Yeah. You were much funnier? You were funnier when, when you were on drugs. <laughs> you know something? I don't think anybody's funnier when they're on drugs. I really don't. My father was a violinist said, when he was talking about marijuana. He said, guys used to come to work high on pot. 
because you know it was a very illegal back then. Right, but, hugely illegal. Yeah, uh, pot, and I went, oh wow, yeah. And he said they all thought they played better when they were high, and I had to tell them, you don't sound better, you sound worse. You right, sound right. better to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're high, you're old. Your timing's off. Everything's off. You know. Right. So, uh, you, you, but you probably think you're killing. You know. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Really? Yeah. Stick around after we after we stop to, if we stop recording. But I okay. We we'll do this again maybe next week. Yeah. Yeah. Good to have you back, boy. I I, I, th I think the world of you. That's uh, that's uh, Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a big round of applause. Thanks, folks. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, all righty, righty, righty. Oh, oh, well, let me turn on my lights here. Then I, oh, well, oh, there we go. There goes the other one. Yeah, okay. Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? A um, couple things I'll talk to you about. One of them in a second. I want to start off uh, this evening by uh, just mentioning that a member of our citizen panel uh, by the name of, uh, uh, of Kevin Stopper um, uh, has been off for the last couple of nights because his mother was in the hospital and um, he didn't know how she was going to do well. And we got the news today that she had passed. and. Uh, uh, I, you know, I love Kevin. I absolutely adore the guy. I, I think he's the, one of the best people I've known and just a sweet, decent person. And uh, I never knew his mother. And um, as I said to him, I'm not going to be as cheap as to say I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. I mean, I just, when, I, when my father died, I got so sick of people coming on and saying, I'm so sorry for your loss, okay? So I, uh, uh, I just want to say that I, I'm sorry for his loss, obviously, but I'm, more than that, uh, I, I feel sorry for him. Uh, I didn't know her, so it's hard for me to mourn her, uh, but certainly I don't like to see this kind of thing happen to anybody that I like and care about, and especially to their, their mother, okay? So I just thought I would mention that. Um, and if you know Kevin, uh, you might want to send him a, a little message saying, you know, anything but I'm sorry for your loss. I mean, that's just, I find that so cheap and so trite and so uh, insincere. I think that's how I want to put it. Anyway, listen, I've been getting, there's something that's been happening tonight, although right now it's fine, it's calm, it's down. Uh, somebody apparently put our, our address here uh, out on the on Twitter and uh, so people have been calling it like crazy to prank us. And I've spent the last half hour uh, throwing them off, con removing them from the queue, as it were. And I won't let them on, but occasionally if on the, the, uh, the screen uh, that we use for the show, you see a uh, uh, you know, thing come up saying, you know, remove or whatever. Please don't mind that. It's just me trying to get rid of these people. Although I probably can let them just sit there in the waiting room and they can wait their asses off and nothing will happen of it. But uh, we only have one person here tonight. Uh, usually when we start out this time of night, it's, uh, it's a lot better than this. Uh, well, you can't get better, though, than uh, our good friend Jeff Stein. But uh, hello, Jeff. How are you this evening? I'm... I'm uh, almost crazy. You're almost <laughs> crazy? Why are you almost... See, it's just you and I, Jeff. I know. Uh, I got something to tell you that what? happened to us after we came home mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we get here and we're going to take in a couple of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, we got... We went to a restaurant and got some food and we started putting stuff away and then Pam opens up to throw some food in the little uh, pantry pantry mm -hmm. yeah okay guess what there were mice living there really 
for three months. Well, how do you know they've been there for three months? Did they uh, did they check in at a certain point and set, sign a registry? I mean, how do you know they were there for three months? Well, so much mouse shit. <laughs> oh, so much. He, in other words, you can tell how many how many months they've been in there by how high the mouse shit is. Is that what you do? Yeah, and also mm -hmm. they took something that mm -hmm. they really liked, mm -hmm. took it and put it in other places in the house. Rice. Rice. Wait a minute. They were moving it. They were storing it away for later. Yes. Yes. I've never heard of mice doing that. Smart mice. Well, I mean, we we had a mouse here, uh, maybe a couple. A mouse. This is not a mouse. We yeah, had we several. Know. Well, it took us a while though to catch mm -hmm. the mouse. You know, he was like chewing into boxes of cereal, and he was chewing into this, and he was chewing into that. Yeah. But finally, what we found, uh, uh, if you and uh, 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 Tony, I'm sure you've heard of this too, peppermint spray. You know, I. I heard that too, and I also heard, I, I had, you know what it is, Alex? Remember the last time I had, my neighbor had them, our houses are connected, mm -hmm. and they they got them, but we got the exterminator, but they were going back and forth. So I got the exterminator, Alex, I, I can't take those fucking things, man. I I chased one into the living room up, because this apartment's empty now, so they were upstairs. They're gone now, but I left the traps down, and I don't see anything, and they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. But Jeff, there's never just one. There's always more. Oh, I know. No, 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 yeah. I killed one with a pizza box, Alex. I had him on the sticky trap. I was skeeving. I, like, I got to get rid of him. Uh, I'm telling you, the, the greatest part about this, that that will drive you crazy. Went nuts. We go to, we finally, Pam cleans up, this, she's cleaning up all this stuff. And finally, I don't know, like 12 o'clock, she goes to bed. And all of a sudden, she says, holy shit, there's, there's stuff in our bedroom, in our bed, in the bed. Were they doing this? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Were they taking, in the bed? were they taking dumps in your bed while you were out of town? You were having, having sex in our bed. Sex <laughs> and with rice, Spanish rice too. They didn't go for cheap stuff. It was a brand new sealed thing. Oh yeah. Oh no. They they get in there. It was there. made out of plastic. Oh, they get know. in there. Yeah. What you got to do is a peppermint spray. Look it up on Amazon. I'm telling oh, you, th right. this is what did it for us. We put traps out. They kind of look. Oh ha! A, a trap. <laughs> I'll just walk around that. You know. Uh, uh, we had a, a number of things we had done to prevent it. We had a guy come in and spray all over the place and everything. Somebody said peppermint spray. So we went and we got peppermint spray, which they say is good as a mouse uh, repellent. And we put the, the uh, peppermint spray uh, in all the places where they would go, and they disappeared. We haven't had a, we haven't had a mouse since. Yeah, I, had a, I put baking soda under the thing too. He told me under the sink. Yeah, like in certain spots, and the peppermint spray. Yeah, and traps, and I haven't seen anything. I put it in the basement. Let's see more but, of your face, Tony. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go. You know what it is, Alex? They, you know what it is, Jeff? Too when they get, we got the exterminator right away. They don't even want to get the exterminator people. The next house when me and my brother move, Alex, we want to get a house attached because I can't live with uh, somebody attached to me. What? When we move, we want to move. Is, is somebody attached to you? Yeah, like the, it's a two family, so it's semi attached. So whatever they get, we may get. Right. No, or yeah. what, or whatever they had, you get. Yeah, they, they were going back. I, I told them, like, nice, I said, I'm getting the exterminator if you want. He'll do it half price. Oh, no, we're going to lay traps down. And they got tenants. I was talking to the tenant who lived upstairs, mm -hmm. who where this apartment is, my mom's apartment, the tenant next door. I said, can I ask you a question? He goes, what? And he says, him and his wife are coming in to have a little kid. You see my substance? He says, yeah, I see him all the time. This was a while ago. I said, <laughs> you should tell them to get an exterminator. He said, we do, but they never want to get it. I said, they can get in trouble with that, I said. They're up there oh, tap, we had a, tap dancing. We, we had an exterminator, a guy coming already. And they got more work to do, but uh, they, they put a lot of stuff out. And we have, I'm, we I'm telling you this, I'm, Jeff. Listen to me. I will. Amazon <laughs> peppermint spray. I'm telling you that will get rid of them. They My hate it. They put peanut butter on the trap. 
Yes, that works great too. Yeah. But Alex, does your whole house? Peanut butter and Anthony, it's all right. Wait, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, uh, Pam, who very seldom shows up on this program, and we're very happy that she is. Hi, Bud. How are you? Yeah, uh, uh, she uh, she wants to say something here, Tony. So, oh, so shut you. the fuck I up. Learn the etiquette. I'm sorry to <laughs> yeah. raise my hand. Yeah. Any... <laughs> I just wanted to ask you: Does your whole house smell like candy canes? No, 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 no. It doesn't really smell. It's not okay. that smelly. Okay, so. No, but it's enough to keep. For some reason, they don't mm -hmm. like peppermint spray. I'm right. taking off. I'm taking off right now to go buy it. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. Yeah. I mean, you get you put you spray <laughs> in all the places where everything. they're gonna where they're gonna be jumping in like. Some cabinets and the, by the way, it's non toxic, you know. Yeah, yeah it, peppermint's it's, great. Yeah, yeah it, it's non toxic, so you can put it in places where there's food and everything else, and just you won't see them. I swear to you. I mean, we, I'm, I'm going to order it right now. I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I had a squirrel okay. infestation once, but <laughs> oh, yeah. well, those oh, are so I want to. Those are, tell you, those are flying you rats. What? Yeah, Tony was saying about what happens to go from one house yeah. to the other. So here's what here's what happened here. We go back and we we call and and we ask a couple of people. They say, uh, "Does anybody that who's taking care of mice problems and stuff like that?" Oh yeah, what's his name? Right down the right next to you. Oh, well, the exterminator said. The exterminator goes. Oh, I've been here before. He knows. I said, holy shit. I said, not only did they fix it next door, yeah. but they told the mice, says, you know what? There's nobody at home in Stein's house. Let's go over there. Yeah, <laughs> right. So you right. went down in Florida. I know they have a body. No, That's I'll tell right. you what happens. I'll tell you what happens. Yeah. Uh, uh, I found with roaches, ro if oh. you have an apartment downstairs and somebody moves out and they had a roach problem they didn't take care of, well, immediately the roaches have to find some other place, so they come up to your apartment. I had that happen in New York, in when I was living downtown. They found this one apartment where it was just this absolute amazing infestation, and when those people left, guess where they came? Oh, I would I would have moved down. I mean, it was path it was disgusting. I had to go out and hire the uh, Eichmann. Of, uh, of, I mean, of, of roaches, <laughs> of roaches. I, I mean, she I came in like, the Hitler of roaches. She was like, <laughs> I'd be the bubble. <laughs> she, she, yeah, she, she turned it into, uh, you know, a Ber Bergen Belson for, for roaches. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, she came in. She just, it was like she, she was really weird, and she was like she hated uh, roaches. Oh, I hate those roaches. Yes, yes. and she knew where they all were. You know, she'd like put the spray down in something and all of a sudden the thing would start moving, you know. She come to Connecticut. Lever, oh, she was here for a month. She was a killer, man. She was an absolute killer. That's a little crazy. You need an yeah. oldie but goodie. So. <laughs> I don't care what you got to find, what I got to pay you. Just get rid of them. Yeah, yeah. But it was, well, so we, we haven't, I don't think we've seen a mouse in, uh, in quite a while, you know. And and I didn't mind mice that much, only because you know they're not really. It, it, you don't want rats. That's what you don't want. No, you that's you funny. know. But mice, you know, come on. People have mice as pets. In fact, I don't. I knew a person who had rats as pets. <laughs> yeah, rats are very smart, by the way. You can train rats to do tricks and things like that. And this friend of mine had a rat and used to teach the rat tricks and would I'd go over and see rat tricks, you know. But anyway, is anybody else going to call? Is there something weird tonight? The number of people we, watching. We watch it. On tonight. What? Uh, the NC March Madness. NC oh, Rebels. March fucking Madness. But I had to take a break. I was oh, watching so many videos. Jesus Christ. Well, no, there are only 20, uh, only about 20 people listening to us. So I figure maybe there's something wrong out there with the feed. But I noticed the feed here is working. You know, it's coming. Well, maybe through. California is your problem. That, that could be. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, we have a lot of California guys. Yeah, at yeah. This time. Right? So when, when's it over tonight? Anybody know? Oh, it's, it's gonna go on the last UCLA plays at like ten thirty. So oh, they're gonna play. Fuck it. God damn it. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't do a show for the rest of this week. Was tonight the first night? Yeah, tonight's the well. Actually, it's. 
the uh, playing games for the Tuesday and Wednesday, but tonight's really officially the first round. Maybe I should have taken all those people who were trying to prank me earlier. Maybe I needed them as an audience, you know? I'm sorry to hear about Kevin's mom, I heard you say. Yeah, yeah, I'm really sorry about it, too. You know, you know I know how no much matter what life. age somebody passes away, Alex, it's never really easy, but it does make it easy if they, like you said, if they lived a long life. Yeah, yeah. Somewhat, yeah. Oh, right. we... We usually have a guy who doesn't take care of rights. Uh, what he does, though, he, he worries about plumbing and stuff like that in the house. So he normally comes over and he checks the house once, oh, I don't know, once a month or whatever. And he was already organized to come like the day before we got there. Mm-hmm. And turn on all the water and stuff like that. Yeah. He didn't show up. You know what the hell? So Pam calls him and leaves him kind of a, like a fuck you note. No, a nice no, no, no. Pam. And, and not my. But she said, what happened to you, Tony? How come you're not here? What's going on? His wife oh, died. Yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah. You, then you, it, 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 when that happens, you feel like crap, don't you? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, you know, you go over there and you start talking to the guy That's and you realize, crazy. oh, yeah, he died. His wife's died uh, three weeks ago or something like that. And so he comes in anyway, mm -hmm. shows up, back apologizing to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he starts crying. Oh, he did to me. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you? Yeah. Here comes Jack Bishop. Uh, I think it's Jack Bishop. Let's. Yes, it is Jack Bishop. All right. There it is. Uh, hello, Jack. Uh, 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 Jack apparently doesn't care for the NCAA either. Oh, hell no. Yeah. I, there, <laughs> there is nothing that upsets me more than seeing millionaires do tricks with balls. Well, they're not millionaires yeah. yet, but technically they do get. Yeah, well, I just, uh, you know, I mean, I just don't follow it. You know, I just don't care. You yeah, know. You don't like sports. Hey, that's the guy who, who owned this building. Not that I don't like sports. There are some sports I will you watch. Like tennis, I thought, right? You, you like the Olympics, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, Olympic stuff I like. That's yeah. exciting. Uh, yeah. You begin to, you know, I like swimming and you know rowing, and I I especially am a fond uh, adherent to curling. I really like curling. <laughs> I was. I don't, I don't remember what the hell curling is. Well, curling is you know it really you just watch it. You'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty simple to figure out. Oh, it's with a, a brush, right? Yeah, yeah, broom. It's a called, broom. It's called a broom. Yeah, it's kind of a job that I really don't want. And and then you, you the uh -huh. guy tries to get it into the middle, but he tries to knock other ones out. Yeah, see. one minute. And you're sitting there watching it, going ooh 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 ooh. There's a lot of that in watching it. So you know. Oh man, my. Are you guys talking about? Uh, Animals and things like that. That's what got my attention. Animals? Yeah, you know, you were talking about rats and mice and things like that. Oh, that's not an animal. <laughs> well, it's it's a it's a it's a mammal, a, a vermin, but I don't think of it as an animal. I think of a cat or a dog or a horse or a pony as a, as a conventionalist. Conventionalist. Uh, the yeah. reason I got to thinking about that though was uh, uh, Donna has always gravitated to weird critters mm -hmm. and uh, at one job that she worked at uh, somebody was leaving the company and moving cross country and they gave donna a bow constrictor holy shit <laughs> now uh there were two things that happened right away with this snake yeah one we found out that uh you got to give it live mice. That's correct. You know, the other thing we found out right quickly was we quit having any friends that would come and spend the weekend with us. But why did she accept the goddamn boa constrictor? Because she wanted it. 
Really? And uh, of all of, you know, and, and we've gone through dogs and cats. And, Is there something wrong with your wife? Yes, oh, she okay. married me. Well, uh, but that, uh, that and the boa constrictor, are there two strikes well, against well, her? Actually, the boa constrictor required the least care of any animal I've ever had in my life. You, you give them a, 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 a mouse once a month. Once a month, they that's eat, all. They only eat once a month. It, that's it. They eat once a month. Do they get and ready? They do they get ready for dinner? Like put on a little bib nah, and nah, fork? No, nah, 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 I'm getting to that. And then they go to sleep, and they sleep for like weeks while they digest the mouse. Oh, but yeah, but I got something to tell you. Mm. Uh, and I, I found this out from iguanas. Okay. Their crap smells horrible. There's nothing worse than the smell of desiccated mouse. Uh, you know, we didn't notice the smell. I got it. Really, didn't. you didn't notice the smell? Nah, nah. And, and but but the but the thing that uh, struck me the most about mm -hmm. it, like I said, was we used to have these particularly friends of Donna's who lived in Oklahoma City. They wanted to come to Dallas all the time because there's nothing to do in Oklahoma City on the weekend. And all of a sudden, when we got the snake, they quit coming. I quit running a bed and breakfast on the weekends. Oh, wow. Okay. And it was amazing. Uh, they stayed away for years until mm. they found out that we had passed the snake on to somebody yeah. else. By the way, Brian Neary has joined us. Thank you, Brian, for joining us tonight. It appears as though we are suffering from the... Uh, the final five or four or whatever that thing is called. Uh, but I thought you liked basketball. Yeah, I was watching uh, uh, San Francisco, USF. Yeah. USF playing. So I was watching that game a little bit, cleaning my garage. And I have a new 65-inch uh, TV in the garage. And I had you guys on there. Oh, really? Yeah, so I got to watch you guys. Isn't while having I'm isn't having a sixty five inch TV in your garage a way of saying you're making way too much money? <laughs> no, it's not, no, it's my man cave. I gotta have it it's, there. Oh, you you have a man. You uh, know, Costco Costco is only five hundred fifty something dollars. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. They're really cheap. They're yeah, really cheap. So yeah, so I was watching you guys, and then I was just about mm -hmm. to start hearing the oh, I'm gonna quit. Nobody's calling anymore. Wah, wah, wah. No, so I didn't I go. To... I'm gonna quit. Nobody's calling anymore. I was just saying, here we go with the goddamn basketball no. games. No, it's not basketball. I don't think people on this panel watches the basketball. That's sure. I mean, I I had to move my live nights to Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh -huh. and that's the exact <laughs> nights that the the NCAA is playing, right? No, it's okay. Yeah. I don't think it's a big deal. You don't think it's a big deal? No, I don't think Alan watches basketball. I don't think. Well, uh, where where's Alan? Where's Alan? Oh. Not that I'm, mm. you know, begging for him, <laughs> but you know, where's Alan? I know. I heard Jeff talk the most I've ever heard him talking, and Tony, both of and them. And he was fa like, and he was fascinating, uh, wasn't he? This is a great show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, I don't have my phone. I gotta get my phone downstairs. I'll be okay. back. Go get your phone. All right. Okay. Leaving, don't worry. No, don't worry. Right. We'll pretend you you're there. About, heard you guys talking about sobs the other night. Oh, I can tell you about that. So I had this one that I was always gonna. Oh. I'm gonna buy it as soon as my nephew completely makes it work a hundred percent. So I went to see it. It's like so low. It's such a small car. And I said, what the hell am I going to do with this thing? I tell you, I had a, I had a, um, uh, I, I used to own a uh, Nissan 380, uh, 300Z. Yeah. Nice. And it, yeah, but they're so low that whenever I would go into like a parking lot and they would have like these little bumpers in the, in each of the parking spaces. It would get hooked up on it, and I eventually was just ripping off the, you know, the front, the front. What do they call that thing below? Oh, the air dam. Huh? Spoiler. 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 Really? I kept ripping off spoilers all the time because the car was too goddamn low. Yeah. You know. So. <laughs> hey Jeff, but I know exactly what you're talking about. I always wanted a Honda Civic 
CRX. Oh, nice. yes. Nice. And I, about 20 years ago, I <clears throat> it was a CRX SI, which was the trick one. And so, I, and it was at a good price and I bought it. Yeah. And, and I had them t bring it to the house and the whole thing. And this was before I d developed some of the back problems I have now. When did this start to become car talk? Go ahead. Anyway. Well, anyway. Oh, why not? Donna says to me, what are you going to do with that thing? Because you can't get in and out of it as fat as you've gotten. Oh. Well, I would divorce her immediately. No, it, it was during one of those periods. And the only reason I would divorce her is a killing isn't allowed. <laughs> in Texas, it might be. Yeah. But uh, uh, she yeah. said uh, you can't get in and out of the thing. And so here recently, I saw the car again. A buddy of mine has it in his shop. And, he, you know, like Jeff was talking about, you know, this guy said, I'll, I'll put it together for you. Yeah. I tried to get in and out of it. Mm. Actually, I just tried to get in it, and I couldn't get in it. Mm. So my grandson doesn't know it, but uh, he's 16 years old, and, and that car is going to Minnesota. Mm. Nice. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, well, I'm drowsy now. <sighs> no, I, I asked Pam, I said, I said, can you just get in the car? That was one of my questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And she goes, yeah, she can get in. But now the problem is getting out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to hold on to, really. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I, I, as I get older, do you find it's more difficult getting out of cars? Oh, I've never yes. had trouble getting out of cars, but lately I get out of like, you know, an uh, Uber or a Lyft or whatever, and I'm no like, bad. you know, I'm having to scrunch across the seat and, you know, hold either side to get out the door. <clears throat> now, is it just me or just have cars become more difficult to get out of? It's just you. Because I used to have an, a big ass Acura, the top of the line Acura sedan, okay? Yeah. And I never had trouble getting out of that thing, you know. Yeah, I think with all the, hmm? all the airbags and everything now, it's hard to get in and out. Oh, really? Okay. My, my Particularly car. the back of a of yeah. four door sedan. Yeah. There's a video of an old guy getting out of a Lamborghini or something, and he <laughs> he opens the door and he slowly gets out and. By the time he's trying to get out, he's on the ground because he can't get up at an angle. He just rolls over, rolls over. He's on the ground and he stands up. <laughs> when well, I get to that point, I'm selling my McLaren. Well, I knew it was time for me to get a taller car when I had a Acura top of the line mm -hmm. about 10, 15 years ago. What was what was that model? The, uh... well, the one I had was a Legend. Legend. No, but good. I had the Acura. It was a RL. Probably. RL. Yeah. Yeah which was what the legend was in the lineup before the RL. Okay, yeah. And, and so uh, anyway, I, I picked up my uh, 17, 18 year old granddaughter. And when she had trouble getting out of my legend, I said, that's it. I got to get a bigger car because if, if it's 17, she's having trouble getting out of the well, when I had, when I had that RL, I said it was like, uh, people said, well, how do you like it? And I said, it's like driving a living room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it was like. I mean, I used it when I had to go on long trips. And I took my sports car when I wanted to do short little jot uh, mm -hmm. journeys around. Because you want that kind of comfort when you're driving long distances. I That's had a right. friend, I had a friend who owned a Ferrari. Uh, a Ferrari with Diablo. Am I, if I got that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, and, no, and he, he, a friend gave it to him, oddly enough. And uh, he said, pick me up, and he said, ah, right, well, let's go up to Tahoe, okay? So, uh, or let's go, yeah, let's go to Tahoe, or let's go to Reno, wherever, wherever. Anyway, we would do these quick, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right, Brian? You can do a quick run to Tahoe and back. I used to oh, do yeah. that sometimes. Say, ah, oh, let's go up for a couple hours and let's come back, right? Okay. Yep. Yep. So anyway, uh, we went in this Ferrari. I think it was Torino. 
I never had a more uncomfortable ride in my life. I yeah. mean, my, my ass was raw by the time we got to Reno. And I'm going, this is a $250,000 automobile. And my question was, why would anybody want this? Hi. All, all the women are making a, a special appearances tonight. Oh, really? Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Pam was on earlier. No. Yeah. She just got home. She's working hard. She's working hard or hardly working? No, she's working hard. Working hard. Right. Say hi. Yeah. Yeah. Why go this way? And you go this <laughs> no, yeah, they're they're very uncomfortable. That's why they say the the McLaren is the most comfortable supercar. But even with that car, this comfort ride is really nice. But like you say, sitting in that position for so long yeah. is really yeah really hard. My friend has a Diablo, and I sat in that to and, try to drive it, and my knee was in between the stick shift and the steering wheel. And by the way, for a long trip, the Ferrari. Have you ever seen the size oh. of the of the trunk in the Ferrari? Yeah. <laughs> you could probably put two sandwiches in there. That's about it. Oh yeah. You know, terrible, terrible car. Why yeah. would anybody pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars for that? The bragging and, and rights. The, and the it's Lamborghinis. Not. The Lamborghinis. Well, the same excuse me. Thing. Excuse me. Excuse me. I I was wrong. It wasn't a Ferrari. That was the other car he owned. This was a Lamborghini. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah. And that was the, the Lamborghini's a Diablo, right? Or is no. it Ferrari's? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, okay. Right. It was a Lamborghini, two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollar Lamborghini, and I said, "This, this my, this isn't comfortable. My, my feet were up, my knees were up around my chin, you mm -hmm. know." I'm going, yeah. "Why do we do this?" Those cars are God's way of telling you you're making too damn much money. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I just said about uh, what I think is McLaren oh. is. It? example of that oh, sh sh now what's interesting is she uh, doesn't know that that's an expensive car the mclaren he doesn't know it's only like twenty thirty thousand dollars i got it oh oh, oh okay oh, you got a deal was the trunk full of cocaine is that why the guy sold it you know <laughs> I don't remember he was in, he was in prison <laughs> he's asleep no the guy who sold it needed cocaine that was the, the why he now, got it so cheap. What's <clears> interesting <throat> is what Enzio Ferrari had as his personal car the last few years that he was alive. A Studebaker? No. <laughs> a, a Nash mid Rambler? No, but he wanted one. No, a midline level Fiat sedan. Oh, God. He said that's all he needed. Those are terrible. Yeah. Those were terrible. You could only cars. drive it for about a month. Yeah, for, and it doesn't work. You dri no, you, you know we used to. If if you ever go to Italy, there were signs along the road about every two miles saying, "Fiat repair, one mile ahead." And I mean, it was like every two miles. Fix it again, Tony. Fix it again, <laughs> Tony. Right. Yeah. That's what Fiat stands for. <laughs> And in Spain, in Spain, Fiat made a car, but what was it called? Because it had to be half owned by Spanish investors. What was it called? I know, I know, I know. What's it called? Fiat. Fiat. S E A T. Yeah. Oh really? Yes, who owns Fiat now? Who who owns it now? Owns Fiat. Yeah. Okay. But that was the it was the same car I think as the Fiat. Yeah. But it just was a Seat. Which was also the same car as the Lada. Maybe I'll like tell you what I rode in, which you guys have probably never ridden in. And I can't remember the name of the car now. But it was the National Car of China. It was the official uh, car of the Communist Party. And it was the worst car I've ever been in in my <laughs> life. It was just terrible. Worst car I was ever in happened in Houston when you and I bumped into each other after losing track of each other for years, mm -hmm. uh, I did commercials for a guy that owned a nightclub there in, in Houston. And he ho he owned an Excalibur, hmm. uh, which was kind of like uh, one of the early replica cars. And it was kind of shaped in style like a 1930s, um, Packard or something like that mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. this car was so uncomfortable and so fast mm -hmm. that I actually we were on 
a major highway in Houston. And I told him, stop the car, I'm getting out. Mm-hmm. Got out on the freeway, walked to a service station, called a cab to take me home. I could never ride in that thing again. I'm trying to look for the Chinese car and I can't find it here. I'm trying to, I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was a horrible car. It's just ghastly. Are yes. you familiar? Yeah, well, yes, Jeff. I went to uh, Australia for a long time mm-hmm. for, to work a project. Mm-hmm. So I'm working on it and I realized I needed some help. I needed another engineer. And I tried to ask for some of the local people and there was nobody around available and blah, blah, blah. So I called this guy up and I says, come on, come to Australia. Tell me what time you're gonna get off on the airplane and and I'll I'll meet you right outside. Mm -hmm. So I meet him outside. (laughs) Now remember to to go from New York to there is already torture. Yeah, right. Just just it's like it's two days. Incredible. So, he, so I go, okay, there's the car. He gets in, he jumped, he gets in the car and he's looking at me. Why am I in the driver's side? Because they have different driver side oh, God. Than, than we have. So he's looking in the car and I says, are you driving? He goes, who the hell drives this car? I said, me, not you, get out of it. You know something? I I don't think, and I've never had to do it, but I don't think I could drive in England. I just don't think I could do it. Now they say that because you- I'm gonna let you take one of my cars and uh, I'll let you try that someplace. No, but I mean that whole right-hand side of the car- Oh, that'll drive you crazy. You know, although, I mean, you do adapt to the road because you know, you're used to traffic being on a certain side of you, so it is when you're in the, one of those cars. But I just don't know, with the rest of the world, the rest of the world, for the most part, drives on that side of the road, on the side of the road we drive in. Why don't the yeah. British, why didn't one day, why didn't they say like, with daylight savings time, hey, I think it's time we went to the other side of the road. Do they just think nobody could adapt to it? Because they tried that in Canada in the um, mid 50s. They Canada did, didn't used they? to drive on yeah. the uh, British side, mm-hmm. I don't know. In, 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 in Western Canada. Mm-hmm. And uh, they decided that they would switch to the American side. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was havoc for, for several weeks. And don't you oh, yeah. remember when the Bay Bridge, which used to be commercial vehicles on the lower yeah. side, yeah. passed? cars on the top do you remember i think it's 263 no here's no here's what happened with the bay bridge was the top was to was cars, uh, was cars and the bottom was was, was tr- no transit yeah like well, transit trains, trucks. trains was it trucks too yeah i didn't remember trucks down there but i do remember trains and one day sometime in early to mid 60s i'm trying to remember when they decided they would do what they are, have been doing since then, where if you were coming westbound, you were on the top level. If you were going to the East Bay, you were on the lower level. Mm-hmm. And they switched on a uh, Monday morning at 1 a.m. And there were wrecks all over the bridge for the next two days. The, the, because they changed, they changed the levels of which you went if you were going in a certain direction. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, east you were going on the lower level. West you were going. That on I the don't upper. remember. See, when I, I left San Francisco, I think, you, I think you were in the service then. I, I left San Francisco, and then I immediately after I got out of that, I moved to like, I think Sacramento, and then from Sacramento I went to Houston, and in all that time, I wasn't there when they finally did away with the trains on that bridge. Mm-hmm. So I don't remember any of this tra- changeover. All I know is when I came back from New York, okay, and uh, I suddenly went on the bridges, I, I noticed I could, here's where I went to go one way and here's where I went to go another way. Do you remember when that changed, uh, Brian? Were you living in the Bay Area no, at the time? No, I don't know, I don't know. When did, you, when did you move to the Bay Area? 
I was born. I was born in Redwood City. Well, actually, I was born in Mills Hospital in San Mateo. Oh, really? And okay. I grew up in Redwood City, and then I moved to San Jose when I started working in tech. So. Oh, so you you really the reason you didn't remember the Bay Bridge was because you just never took it. Right, right, right. Yes, yeah, too north mm-hmm. for me when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. The hardest thing about changing from the right hand to the left hand mm-hmm. is. You start driving the car and you and you're doing okay, and and you're in the city and there's other people and blah blah blah. Well, and then you got to make a right hand turn. Yeah. And you make this right hand turn and you're on the wrong side. Yeah. And people are coming right at you. Yeah. 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 That is the scary part. When I when I went to I went one time went to Sweden for work and then I stopped in uh, <clears throat> uh, Italy. So I went I flew to Milan. I got a rental car. But the only reason I did that, because I found out, yeah, Italy is on the same side we're on. So I felt safe. But if it wasn't, I don't know if I would have gone. So I, t- I took the and I drove all the way down, oh, down to Italy uh, for uh, the week. I, I was fine in France, Spain, Italy, yeah. uh, uh, Germany, you know. Uh, I don't know if I could either, because like, like Jeff saying, going straight, you can sort of adapt a little bit. But man, right when you start turning left or right, that's when it goes a little bit bizarre in the brain. <laughs> You're gone. The only thing that you get in, in, in certain parts of Europe that you have to learn how to do, and I, I got pretty good at it, was when you hit a circle. And you oh, have yeah. to, like, it, it, it go in the circle, but you're going to get off on one of the exits on the circle, so you have to know where to be at the time you want to get off on that exit. You have to know how to do it. And when I first had to do that, I think I went around a circle about five times and turned into butter, you know? Uh, it was it was pretty scary, but then I got used to it, and I got to know how to use those circles, and they made sense, you know. Mm. They made a lot of sense. Yeah, I went, when I when I drove to Italy, I went and uh, I got the car. It was at nighttime; the sun was just coming down when I dropped into uh, Milan. Got my rental car, and I found a hotel to go to. So, so I drove, and somehow I got on the freeway by bypassing the toll. Well, the toll, you're supposed to get a ticket because you have to pay for all the freeway time, right? Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that. So I, I bypassed that and I go, 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 and I'm going off at the off ramp and it's a toll. And I don't know what I'm paying because I didn't grab a ticket. And the guy's yelling at me in Italian. I don't know what the heck the guy's saying. So I just gave him like some money and <laughs> he gave me change. And I don't know if we took a tip or what, but he gave me some change back. And I just went, then I started learning, oh, I was supposed to get a ticket, and then you, you know, when you drive your off ramp, they, then they figure out how much you pay. But man, and then as maybe Alex, you know, and though those streets, those freeways are spotless and they're so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then I come back here and I go down one of the freeways, and there's like a mattress, and there's you know, a kids' toys on the side of the freeway. It's so <laughs> terrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, we still have like here in New York, we still have turnpikes actually. Yeah, there's still turnpikes here. Um, is that but, the same thing? Well, when they were first created, they were created as a uh, as a wonderful thing in which you paid to go on these roads and you could go any speed you wanted to go. There was oh, no wow. speed <laughs> limit. Do you remember that, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. That was the great thing about turnpikes. And all of a sudden, one day they said, well, we're going to put a speed limit on it and you still got to pay. You know, But the reason you paid was to get on a road where you could go as fast as you wanted to. Right. Yeah, and there was no exits. I mean, yeah, they were, you know, they were not. not yeah. It was easy to drive through that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Alex, you wouldn't recognize Houston because they have <clears throat> turnpikes now all over Houston. You pay, it seems like, uh, every half a mile. Really? Ridiculous. Yeah. Well, what the hell? Um, there was something. What was I going to say? There were, oh, yeah. Um, uh, Brian, you, the other day you were telling a story. You kind of touched on a story, uh, and I I've been watching this thing about Elizabeth Holmes. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, what's the name of the company? What was the name of the company? Uh, Theranos. 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 Th- Theranos. Yeah, yeah. Theranos. You. And you said that you actually met her. You did? Yeah, I interviewed with her. Yeah, this is yeah, a woman. So- this is a woman. Let's explain it. Who started yeah. this company and eventually was popped for you know what they consider to be a, a fraud okay yeah. yeah so you went you auditioned or auditioned. yeah i went so yeah so a time in my life i said i wasn't happy <laughs> so 
So I threw out my resume a couple times, a couple places, and that was one of them. So they were doing like the same thing we are, but they're trying to take it to like the next level, and it's very difficult. So, um, well, they yeah, were so trying. I, they were trying to come out with a a box in which you could put a drop of blood in there, and it would check against everything. Yeah, but there's a lot of heating and cooling and, and thermal cycling mm -hmm. that has to happen in that box to do all the sample prep. Mm -hmm. Our stuff. Our stuff is like all contained in this in this small cartridge. It's really complex in there, but yeah. Um, but the yeah. So she tried to do everything in this box, and so they had everything in the box. They were actually running some stuff, but they were burning everything up in those things. So what they were doing is they were saying, "Hey, we're going to start doing beta testing." And so they were taking samples from people, and they were oh, actually doing external testing and not doing it in their box. And they were saying that they were using their box all the oh, time wow. and they weren't. Yeah, but so I went to first round and it was actually a headhunter called me. So I uh, first round of interviews, second round of interviews, I started asking them, how much is this, you know, and I know what they were doing They're They're just starting up. So uh, they just want me to help everywhere. And then uh, I started asking about money and they said, oh, if you're sitting across from her, you'll, you know, you're pretty much out of the job. But I was one of the first people that interviewed for this position. And then the third set of interviews was with Sunny, who was the Indian right. gentleman, right. and then, then her. Yeah, she came up in, you know, the yoga pants and the long shirt, uh, the typical what they, they always show her. And but but I didn't <clears throat> so I didn't get that job. They were trying to get other candidates, and then actually I got another offer at Sepi, so I stayed there. Um, but I know like three or four three people that left there and about five people that were there. So when they have a, there's actually a documentary, Alex, that's even better of it. It's not this fake sto the story of it, but it's actually filming from there and everything. Right. And some of my friends are in there and I would laugh and they go, oh my God, I saw you guys in there. But um, yeah, so they were just doing so, everything was so unethical in that place. I mean, Jeff knows, you, you know, FDA regulated, when you're talking oh. about in the body, I mean, that stuff is highly regulated. And you have to be everything dialed in and and uh, well, I'm watching I'm watching the drama they turned out about it but I mean um, do you think she was a fraud or do you think she really believed in what she was doing but she just couldn't get it to work so she faked it exactly yes. yeah I, I think I think she, she <laughs> believed in, yes yeah she believed in that they could do everything in there but she you know but when you start applying everything i mean jeff knows firsthand you know when you start applying all that stuff man i have engineers right now drive me crazy because they think this is one thing and then when we go to production it it can't you know it has oh. to be production ready yeah so she had it in her mind what she could do and she just grabbed a bunch of people to follow and just listen to her and you know but when i was applying for that man it was i told you it was like six months before christmas it was like around june i guess and man, they were like, you, it was known that you would get there early. You're going to leave there around eight or nine o'clock and they will feed you, but you're just in there trying to get this to production, but they just had a hard time. So mm -hmm. she believed in it, but she just tried to, she was getting so much money funding. Oh my God. I don't think she's been sentenced yet. Has she? No, not sentenced yet. Not sentenced yet. Is the company still in business? No, 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 no. Uh, that is funny my the history of my so my first job in my senior year of high school was working at hill packard building drug analyzer testers mm -hmm. and i was in this one building in on california avenue in palo alto which was one of the hp buildings mm -hmm. and i worked there and then actually went into facebook that was a facebook building the original one from zuckerberg he lived down the street about four houses mm -hmm. and then it was theranos and then they now it's uh, all residential and yeah mm -hmm. Wow. Pretty great. Wow. You're going to call me. What? You should have a one to one talk. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, you know, right? Things. I mean, you have highly regulated and, and, and those right. type of things, right? Everything you're building. Be mm -hmm. Beckton Dickinson was one of my customers. Mm -hmm. who, yeah. Brought, yeah, Johnson and Johnson. All of, the, all of those. Yeah. yeah. And some of them are great, some of them are idiots, but you know. Yeah. That's. that's you don't want to say who the idiots were here? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> was J and J Someone okay? Good friends. Was J and J okay? Uh, yeah, they're okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would you want to take their vaccine? Oh yeah, the one shot. Uh, I, uh, I know. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm happy with Pfizer. <laughs> That's all. I have Pfizer. 
<laughs> what happens? I got, you know, they say they're going to go for a fourth shot now because mm -hmm. Pfizer has right. applied for it. Yeah, but Moderna, Moderna has it. If Moderna, if Pfizer gets it, can I go in and say, give me another Moderna? I think you could mix and match. Don't hold me to it. I think you could. I, I think you can. I heard Pfizer is is uh, selling it now. Is selling fourth? Like yesterday. The fourth? Yeah. Well, but they haven't gotten FDA approval. I thought they, they had. No, they were asking for it. Mm. They were asking for it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I heard that while I was in the car. You probably heard it from Phil. Phil. No, no, no. 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 Phil's a terrific guy. Or maybe it was TikTok. I would use it for regulatory stuff. In a TikTok. Particularly maybe. with my body. Tony, be nice. Yeah. Tony and I chat about TikTok a lot. Because they think it's actual news. I don't think you would ever find Walter Cronkite on TikTok. Well, we, we have a guy who calls this show. Uh, who 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 believes TikTok is good source for news? And I've looked at TikTok, and all I see is women's breasts jiggling up and I down. See dogs doing tricks too. Yeah, dogs <laughs> doing tricks, and cute kitty pictures and uh, things like that. But I never have seen anything that I I refer to as news. You know. I have a I have another friend that's a car friend, really good friend, and really talented, really talented, and then. Man, all of a sudden he got on this this God thing. He started posting everything on these God, you know, he started actually reading the Bible and stuff like that. And then he's he now all these conspiracy theories. You know, the, the puppet the puppet that uh that that uh, when Obama was there, you know, Biden put this puppet in Ukraine and now, you know, all this stuff and oh my gosh, it's just bizarre. And it's like the TikTok thing is like it's like man, all of a sudden there's like five posts or six posts in a row and it's yeah, like wow yeah. how how do these people find this stuff? I don't even see it anywhere. Can I went through that conversation two days ago with my fifty five year old nephew who believes every conspiracy theory oh. that ever has come out, including including a theory that uh, Lincoln was not killed by John Wilkes Booth, but was killed by Mrs. Lincoln. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? Back in the day, it was the right left wing that was paranoid about conspiracy yeah. theories. And now it's the right wing that's, a, that's, that's uh, uh, afraid of conspiracy theories. I, I'm amazed by some of the stuff I hear. I but, mean, I like the stories. Like, you know... I, I can say this because some older kids from high school friended me on Facebook. Right? Yeah. In some of the classes. But mm -hmm. I used to make report cards for them because they were so stupid, pretty much. They were mm -hmm. lazy, but whatever. Now, one of the guys friended me. He's a nice guy, but, mm -hmm. right? He is totally like now. He was like drinker, this, that, always in a bit. Nice guy, but just out there, right? All of a sudden, out of here, he's like, he's found Jesus, like Brian saying. It's like, my sister's like, is this. The kid, one of the older guys you made report cards about? I see, I was saying, it was like clockwork, $20 every quarter used to come to me. I used to make him a phony report card. So I had it saved. Now all of a sudden, all of a sudden they love Trump, right? It's like this, I said, it's bizarre world. It's like, a, I don't get it really. I, I think, they, is it just me or they just lost their mind? Yeah. You know so huh? A whole bunch of stuff while we're driving, these huge signs that are Jesus and Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they they are gonna run the world. Yeah. They, they they are, what they're doing at gas stations now. There's a little sticker, and it's Biden, and he's pointing, and it says, "I did this," and they've been sticker they've been sticking these at the gas pumps. So when your gas is going, yeah, there's a little sticker of Biden saying, "I did this." You know what? You know what I think it could be, and I told my sister this, Alex. Mm -hmm. As we get older, right? Do you think as you know you start contemplating your life and everything if you were good and bad do you think these people as they get older maybe even us we don't know it subconsciously they start saying okay maybe i have to reevaluate my life uh oh i wasn't that great so maybe if i start being finding god or whoever i want maybe they start feeling like i gotta make amends for my past sins can it be like psychological playing on their mind well i don't know but i just want to ask a quick question here how do you feel we're doing on dealing with uh, Ukraine, this country? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. 
I feel we should go in there and kick ass and take names and yeah. uh, I think a dare, literally dare Putin to try and start World War Three, you know? Because I don't think he's he's going to do it. He hasn't no, got the power to do it. Right. I think we could do it, Alex. I think China really needs us to sell their goods. No, but no, no, but here's how we can do it. Well, how we can justify it. Maybe we can't justify it through NATO, but we're sign we signees to the Geneva Accords. And the Geneva Accords no, are against war crimes yeah. and against this kind of thing going on, and I think we have a right to go in there. I agree. Absolutely. I think, you could. I, I think for the sake not. of humanity, for the sake yeah. of humanity, and He's I'm not one to shove us into wars, but if we're going to go into a war, God damn it, let's go into one that's at least has some kind of decency about it. You know, we've been in so many indecent wars. But. They have airplanes that are absolutely can kill their their facilities. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. 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 You well, know, so. it's just. We got the stuff. Why not use it? Yeah. Uh, what do you think, uh, Brian? Yeah, I think Josh said it the other night. You know, if NATO wasn't made for this. You know, what is it made for? You know, there's you just can't let people do that. I mean, it's not like some small country that's you know taking over some small city. You know, this is pretty big. Um, yeah. yeah I, I, I think. I think. How, how long are we in a there, quiet? There's no. this one city, Lviv, which is on the border mm -hmm. of uh, the Ukraine, Ukraine and Poland. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, they have not been bombing that very much. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you the reason why they haven't been: one errant bomb, and they're bombing Poland. You know, That's right. right. Okay, so that city is kind of <clears throat> safe because they don't want to hit Poland. Because if they hit Poland. NATO will be all over their ass. Maybe. Yeah. You know, I just think we should be a little more proactive in this. I think we should just say, screw you. You know, you're, you're not going to count on, on the fact that we're not going to go in there because it might trigger World War III. I'm so sick of hearing that. Yeah, he says you know? that like he's like ready. Uh, you know, yeah, World War III is right around the corner, folks. No, it isn't really. Yeah, I mean, how how much long how long are we going to let this just keep going and going and going? And if you let him get away with this, what's he going to get try to get away with next? Okay, he's going to think he's invincible. Don't let just him think that. Just remember what happened in Cuba. Hmm? They were out of there in like twelve seconds. Who was we decided to kick their ass? Who who was out of there in Cuba? Cuba. Who was out of there? Oh, Russia. Oh, yeah, they yeah. turned around and went back. Yeah. That's yeah. right. They, yep. They, yep, absolutely. And, it, a second. you know, I mean, this guy's crazy, but I don't think he's that bad shit crazy. And if he is, well, let's take him to the, to the cleaners, okay? Anyway, hey, you better get going, Jack. You've got to go do a show. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, i got to go do a show. Intersection, top of the hour. Catch you there. Oh, okay. Tony Magno, call me. I want to talk about Chinese food. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you'll have to hear about it in certain terms that you don't find pleasurable. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, so uh, listen, uh, J Jeff. Great having you here tonight. It's been a nice old show with hardly anybody. From here on in, nobody call. All right. This is a Thursday night, just like Mondays now. Only us. Yeah, only us. And it's it's really it's really been very nice, you know. And of course, Jack can't figure out how to hang up on Zoom. Just click on the. There you go. <laughs> oh, we're so big now. Anyway, thanks, Jeff. And thanks to you, Tony. And thanks to you, uh, my good friend, Brian. And uh, thanks to, of course, Jack for having joined us uh, and saving our ass and not making this a, a two man show. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave goodbye at you, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Good people, good people. Once again, my, my thoughts go out to, uh, to Kevin Stoppard, a regular caller to this show, sometimes known as Santa Claus. And his mother passed, and uh, she was, I think, almost 91 years old, so... Not young, but you hate to see anybody lose their parent. It's just, it's just not, not good. That's putting it mildly. 
Anyway, stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next with The Intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. Yeah. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.